Let's talk about miniatures. I've been known to do some role playing. Hey, welcome to another miniature mashup. Today we're going to talk about memorials. You know, memorials have been in the news a lot lately. Uh, there's a little bit of controversy surrounding what they might mean in the U.S. today, specifically Confederate memorials, like this 25-foot monstrosity honoring Nathan Bedford Forrest, the founder of the Ku Klux Klan in Tennessee. Now, this one's on private land, so there's really nothing we can do about it or say about it, although you can imagine what it would be like being a person of color in Tennessee and seeing a huge statue honoring someone who would gladly tie you to a tree until you were dead. Um, but there are busts of this character also in public land as well. But I'm not here to talk about that. I actually wanted to talk about uh, fantastic memorials, as in, in fantasy literature and movies. Like in The Fellowship of the Ring, we've got the Pillars of Kings here in this beautifully shot scene. I was probably asleep at this point in the movie because uh, this one moves real slow. I like, I'm more of a Two Towers guy. Dwarven statues we see all over the place and the Dwarven halls, and those are pretty cool too. Today I'm going to be making some more memorials on Miniature Mashup, and it's going to be made out of uh, just some toys that I've used on previous episodes. Real cheap ones, stuff you can get your hands on. You can certainly get your hands on something similar or improvise. You don't need to have the exact materials I have to do this today. These pillars from the bu Bucket of Mythic Warriors, and that's something that's available from uh, Toys R Us. I think they might have changed the name on it, but I think if you Google Mythic Warriors Bucket, find your way to whatever it's called now. This little stone Circle is also from that bucket. I'm going to be using these knights and um, these heralds. They're from the Toy Major Castle I reviewed in the last episode. I was sort of itching to use them for something. I've got a little plastic, I think it's a lens cap here. I'm not entirely sure. It's just some plastic cap from something. You could probably use a pill bottle top for that. I'm going to use that to make a little pedestal for the center statues. And as you can see, I'm already hot gluing this stuff together. Got a window grate from a plastic dollhouse that I, uh, I used a bit of this in making the fortification. I still got bits of the dollhouse laying around. I've been itching to use those too. So uh, let's start hot by hot gluing all this stuff together. I'm gonna snap the two stone pillars on either side and put the little stone circle in the middle. We're gonna put that bottle cap on top of the stone circle. So I've got two fighting knights uh, with their swords held up high. I'm gonna put them back to back in the center, hot glue them down, and I'm gonna hot glue the herald on each pillar. And I'm gonna have them facing slightly outward. Also some fantastic memorials in uh, reality like the Mothman statue, which is a memorial. And there's a memorial to the Mothman, this creature which supposedly stopped the Silver Bridge disaster in 1967. There is a memorial to Sherlock Holmes on Baker Street in London. It's actually to Arthur Conan Doyle, but the statues of Sherlock Holmes, and it's pretty cool. There's this statue of Gimli, the Viking, which is uh, in Lake Manitoba in Canada, which honors the Vikings as the uh, first discoverers of North America, and that's pretty cool too. And his name's Gimli, which uh, I don't know if that came before or after Lord of the Rings. I'm going to assume after, because uh, that statue I don't think is that old. I like making uh, fantasy terrain. I, it turns out I like it as much as painting miniatures. Right now I'm on a jag with it. I really can't stop. I haven't gone back to miniatures in some time. Just didn't think I'd like it as much as I do. Yeah, I used to make terrain here and there, but I always felt it was kind of a necessary evil. Now I, I enjoy it just as much uh, as painting miniatures. You know, it's sort of a separate thing. It can be just as creative as you can see here. I'm um, really building something from scratch, which is something I rarely get to do with a miniature. You know, really construct something. Flock it with craft sand. I'm going to get some of the craft sand on the base where the two knights are standing as well. We're going to flock, we're going to prime the whole thing in black. And then we're going to dry brush gray on everything. Uh, usually with miniatures, you're stuck with what they've sculpted. And maybe you swap a weapon, maybe you swap a head or add wings or something like that. But, um, you know, unless you're one of these masters who works in the green stuff, I, I, which I'm not. I'm sort of, when I paint miniatures, I'm just sort of painting miniatures. It's not nearly as, you know, interesting now uh, as building something like this. This is really fun for me. 
Uh, but I also like doing uh, trees. I'll be doing a couple of trees here. And uh, not only do you use tree, I can use trees in war games uh, like 40k or Frostgrave, uh, which are a couple I play. I also, you know, I also play Necromunda, whatever. You guys don't care what I play. I'm just, you know, listing off why I might make terrain. Um, but also, I find that trees are good for D and D as well, especially if you have overland encounters. Sure, you can sketch them out, but it's actually a little faster to throw trees on the battlefield uh, if they're already made, and especially if you have them in sort of clumps like I'm making them here. I sort of got these these large sort of wooded clusters. I've got a few of these now. You've seen uh, a few others that I've made in other videos of sort of haunted trees. And you can throw those down very quickly and have a nice forest sort of uh, sylvan battle mat super fast. You know, you don't have to draw everything out. You can just, you know, you save your energy to draw the road and maybe some water something features. And then you can just plop the trees around and boom, you're ready to go. And that's kind of fun. Plus, you know, the trees look better than a green circle that you've drawn, you know, that doesn't even meet or or what looks like a little green cloud. You know, how tall is that tree? How, how much is it obstructing my view? It kind of comes into question when you've got an actual piece of terrain, then line of sight becomes clearer, you know, um, you get a, a better sense of what the tree actually is. So I think even if you are someone who just plays RPGs, you know, if you play something that's fantasy or something that's going to be in a lot of forested areas, uh, it might be worth it to invest in a couple of tree clusters like this, just, you know, to throw them all down. I plan on making a virtual forest myself, um, not just for D&D, but also for Frostgrave uh, or War Games. So I'm kind of hooked on it. I've got a lot of the materials left. I've got some trees from the Toy Major uh, castle. I'm not going to show you every tree I make, so don't worry. This isn't going to turn into like Bob Ross adventures with happy little trees and, and shrubs. I'm I am going to get back to painting monsters and whatnot. Uh, we'll, we'll try to keep it interesting here for you guys. Um, but I just wanted to show you some of my process for for making these little uh, tree groves and uh, show you my statues today. Um, the statue I thought was interesting. You know, the trees, maybe less so. I was always always tacking those on as a little extra. Here's an update. The Fungin Master is suffering with poison ivy in halfway through September. Actually, it's damn near October. And you might ask, well, how can you pull that off this late in the season? Well, my mother's got an outdoor cat. It used to be my cat, but I moved in with my girlfriend. She's got a cat and a dog, so my mom's, um, she loves the cat. It's it's worked out very well. It's not like I just dumped him on her. Uh, they're both very happy with each other, uh, but she does let him outside. If you've got an outdoor cat, you, you get a lot of fun, free stuff like uh, lizards in your house, uh, dead or alive, uh, voles sometimes in your house, dead or alive. Uh, little snakes, uh, chiggers in your leg, those are nice, and poison ivy, because cats will go out there and they don't, they're not content to sit on the porch, maybe some are, uh, but Buddy, my mom, my, my cat, he likes to destroy nature and bring it to us, so yeah, I, I picked him up, I pet him, I was over there painting my mom's deck uh, this week, and no good deed goes unpunished. So now I've got uh, poison ivy on my arm, a little bit on my face. Uh, who knows where it'll end up? I'll keep you posted. It's very exciting times. Kind of miserable with it, but it's it's not like it's bad. I don't get it bad, but uh, I do kind of have a physical job, and I put my hands in chemicals, and now the skin's broken on them, so it's kind of slowing me down. I gotta wear gloves all the time. I haven't had poison ivy in years. It's it's a real minor thing. It's a real first world problem. I just. I just gripe into you guys because, uh, well, mostly I just have time to kill while I, this video is shooting. And I, I can only describe my brush strokes so many times. Uh, you know how I paint. You can see colors for yourself if, or you wouldn't watch this video. So I, I could really just put Muzak on this. In fact, There's a wild magic front coming in from the Dales this morning. All you Feyrunian pyromancers may want to stay inside as pyromancy may become unpredictable. The time is 2.15. I uh, also did manage to get uh, some of the Tombstone Corners miniatures from the Dollar Tree. And this is something I'm very excited about because I've never been able to get my hands on them. They just don't seem to carry them in this area every year. This is the first year I've seen them. Uh, I'm a little disappointed with how small they are. Um, based on the pictures, I just thought they would be bigger, which I don't know why, because I do have some of their Christmas, um, what are they, 
called like cobblestone corners or whatever the Christmas equivalent of the Halloween one is. I've got some of those and they are pretty tiny. So you'd think I would I would th realize they're the same size, but when I saw the uh, skeleton gazebo for the first time, I was a little underwhelmed by its size. I'm gonna show you the gargoyles out of that pack on my tower. Looks really nice. I was really glad to get them. 